hey, I made a thing. I made a thing to show the normal distribution moving around uh, because it's really easy to do in JoJo. That's the mean changing, that's the spread changing or standard deviation. Uh, and in the background is some real data, uh, 500 bits of real data. Uh, if you want it after that, I can have loads more. And the it's plotted as a histogram. So you can see that it is a random uh, set of data. So I'm going to explore how I just made this. Uh, the distribution uh, that we call the normal is an approximation to what real life data is. But if you particularly make a histogram with wide uh, bin widths, then you do get a pretty good approximation. Uh, and you can still move it around. So I like making things move. I'm just going to show you how I built this file dead quick. I saw a tweet about the normal distribution and how students were finding it hard to understand. And as a teacher, this is, is important because the normal distribution is important. It describes uh, lots of things in the real world. And even if you're not studying advanced maths, understanding how the normal distribution is uh, like it is and uh, how to use it is actually quite important. So I thought I'd just quickly demonstrate a way of visualizing it nicely. I'm going to use GeoGebra uh, for this because... Uh, it's what I do. A uh, quick thing to notice is that Jojo has a probability calculator mode built into it, which pops up a normal distribution shape. Um, it's probably that way for you, isn't it? The, uh, this shape is the classic bell curve, the Gaussian, the normal, lots of names for it. It's very important. Most naturally occurring data with lots of caveats occurs in this thing because you've got a central spike, which is where the average outcome is. And the, the spread either side tails off as you get further away from it. This is how data, which tends to have a certain value, tends to distribute itself. Um, the this is a really great tool uh, particularly for doing calculations with it but the one problem with this is that when you change the mean in this if i change this to say 50 instead of zero uh it's almost like the picture doesn't change at all uh, because actually every normal curve is the same all it's done is rescale the line along here and if i change the spread which should, should change how spread out this is if i change that to 20 uh again the the shape doesn't change it's just rescaled it and that's quite a profound fact that all normal distributions are similar. They're just kind of scaled versions of them, or maybe squashed, not quite similar. But when you're first understanding it, seeing how these parameters actually move it and squish it and squash it or stretch it is quite helpful. So I just want to show a quick way of being able to demonstrate that. So I'm going to close the probability calculator and just use the normal GeoGebra window. Uh, and there's uh, we're going to need those two parameters we talked about. They're actually called mu and sigma. Uh, to type mu, it's the Greek letter M, but if you type M, you get an M. So if you type Alt M, you get a mu. Don't type Alt U, even though it sounds like a U and looks a bit like a U. Uh, that gives you the infinity. And it's not the Greek letter U. Uh, that would be Upsilon, I think. Anyway, uh, Alt M gets you mu. And I can let this go up to something large just in case we want a mean, which is high. That's fine. And uh, what else are we going to do? We are going to get a sigma. Alt S. Um, you can do Alt Shift S and get a capital sigma anyway, but Alt S. And I want this to be not negative. In fact, I don't really want it to be zero either. So let's let it go up to something like that. They're not doing anything yet. They're just sliders. Uh, so let's just now use those sliders to build uh, a normal distribution. And there's a command called normal. Now, the first two in this list give you uh, ways of getting the value of the distribution at that point. I'm just going to ignore that. This is the one that's going to give us the distribution itself. It's got that mysterious X in it. I'm going to, I'm going to use Alt M to get the mu I've just defined and press tab to get the next argument Alt S for sigma. I don't want it to be cumulative. Uh, it is not going to plot it. So I'm just going to zoom out with my mouse wheel. And you see that. Ah, so the first thing is it's a, the mean is happening at about 60. So around here, but I can't really see it because the uh, the bump is very small. This is a probability graph, so I need to make sure the Y axis out and holding down shift and dragging it. Now, there's another way you can always get to a decent zoom. It doesn't always do what you want, but zoom to fit does some some sort of appropriate zoom from which you can adjust it. And I probably don't want it as, as crazy tall as that. There is the normal shape. And crucially, because I've built parameters, I can now move it around. So that's the mean changing. You see that the change in the mean changes where the spike is. And if you change the spread, the standard deviation, it spreads out uh, or is very tight. And that's the sort of fundamental thing I want to get at. So when you're first encountering a normal distribution, what do these two parameters mean? You need to see that move, I think. Uh, the fact that you can go anywhere like that. And if you change the other one, it doesn't change where the spike is. It just changes how spread it is and how spiky it is. So there are some other things to do, but already this is a useful tool. And even just building that in front of students um, or if students building it yourself forces you to get to grips. Um, I even pinned up a quote behind me recently um, on my wall. Can you see it if I, if I switch back uh, over here? Uh, what I cannot create, I do not understand. And that was left on Richard Feynman's blackboard after he died. And he put it on his board and if you can't build something yourself. You, you haven't understood it. And in mathematics, actually building something, coding it uh, or building it in Jojibra 
this is kind of the parallel for me. So just building, even I'm shortcutting, I didn't derive that formula up there. I don't need to, but I can still get to grips with something if I can sort of make it move because I've built it. Now there's a couple of other things we should do. I'm just going to hide this distribution because real data does not look like that. But we can show some real data because there is, um, in GeoGebra, a random command gives you random numbers, but there's also a random normal, which gives you a random number from a, a normal distribution, which most things, when you get down to it, I'm not going to go into the uh, uh, the central limit theorem here, but most things are normally distributed or, or can be shown, variations can be normally distributed. But this command lets me pick a number from a normal distribution. So I'm actually going to get a whole bunch of numbers. In fact, I'm going to make a slide of how many numbers. Let's say that ends an integer and it goes up to, say, 500. Uh, and this is going to be the number of numbers I'm going to generate. It could be anything. And uh, let's make a list using the sequence command. And each entry in the sequence is is not going to depend on the variable I'm going to march through. It's just going to be a random normal from the distribution I've just made, which is mean mu and standard deviation sigma. And then it doesn't matter what variable, um, but I'm going to let it run from 1 to n. Uh, that capital X is just literally doing nothing. It's just going to run through like a sigma notation. Anyway, there we go. I've got a list of numbers and apparently they're normally distributed with mean 123 and standard deviation 14.3. What I'd really like to do is see a picture of that, probably a histogram. So let's do that. This is slightly fiddly, but once you get the hang of it, it's okay. There's histogram command. We could do this with some buttons, but I'm going to do it with a command straight away. Let's do the one that has some raw data because I've got a list of raw data. It's called L1. I should have called it something better, shouldn't I? Never mind. They called it something for me. And uh, it does need the class boundaries. It, it, you can get it to pick them itself if you use the buttons, but I'm actually going to tell it what the class boundaries are. So this is slightly involved. The class boundaries are going to be the list of the boundaries of the bins we put the data into. And most data is going to be within, I don't know, like 10 standard deviations of that central point. It could be further away, but I'm going to kind of bank on the fact that it's not. So the list of class boundaries is going to be a sequence of numbers. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, in fact, it's just going to be a sequence with a start value and an end value. Let's, let's just go from the mean, take away 10 lots of the standard deviation. Is that, I hope that's going to be enough. And then from the mean, add 10 lots of the standard deviation. Uh, and that, that will create uh, a bunch of boundaries of the class. Then I want the data, which is the stuff I made. It's called L1. I want it to use density to so true. And the density scale factor uh, defaults, if you don't put this in there, it defaults so that the area of the histogram is equal to the number of bits of data, in my case, 278. So actually, I'm going to let it um, go into full probability scale by dividing uh, that. So it's, it's going to be 1. The density scale factor of 1 gives me area 278 divided by n. I think, And that's now looking like a histogram. Fingers crossed, it does plot it. And if I put the normal distribution back over it, you can see it's kind of got there. Now, what I should also do is maybe change the bin width because it's going up in ones. So let's just double click on that definition again. And the sequence could go up in steps of, I'm going to call it W. I haven't defined W. It's asked me for a slider for W. And now I've got a way of changing the bin width. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I should let that not go negative. So let's just change the properties of W to go down to non-zero. And let's go up to 10 if we want to. That's fine. Now I've got a bin width. You can see already a histogram uh, when it's got very tiny class boundaries, you get spiky and you spread it out and it's actually matching that curve really nicely. Uh, and I can change the number of bits of data in there. And actually every time I change some of the parameters here, those random numbers are updating. So we get different uh, sampling of the random thing and changing the bin width. It's just changing how it's plotting that. Uh, so that's nice. This, this starts to look like real data uh, and it's slightly messy. If you make the bin width small, you see that real data isn't perfectly forming like that. Uh, but it is following roughly the normal distribution. And you can quite often get a good approximation by increasing the bin width to see that. And what's great is that this still moves around with my parameters. So I can change the mean and it's doing sample from that. And I can change the standard deviation and it spreads out. And you can see that it's nice to see the real data looking slightly messy, but roughly following that. So already we've got a nice tool to visualize what real data looks like and what the idealized normal distribution looks like. And it's got, you can make it move, which if you read anything I've written about that uh, or seen my videos, you can see that it's a big part of how I like to teach. It makes something move, particularly if it's interactive, changes the way you feel about it. If you can build it yourself, then we're back into Feynman territory uh, where if I can't create it, I haven't understood it. If I can create it, I probably understood it a bit better. One other thing we can do to finish with, just because we're playing with it and we've built it so far, I'm going to put a couple of points on the x-axis 
I think I missed there. Um, is that on? Um, we should check what that. I don't want it. I don't want it to move around. So actually, what I can do is actually, if you can't click in the right place, you can always do point command and say on the x-axis, please. And uh, it's called it A, and you see that is attached to the x-axis. I'm going to do another one. For B point on the x-axis. The axes are lowercase followed by uppercase A and then spell axis. And these could be some limits for maybe I want the area under the normal distribution, which is an important thing. At the moment, my histogram is labeled as one. That's just telling me the area of the entire histogram. I can turn that off. But now what I'd like to do is actually realize the connection between integration and a normal distribution, which is the area under a curve, which is the probability of being between those values. So let's just get that happening. Integral of, uh, let's do function F, which I defined earlier. Uh, it's called F up there and let's go from the x of the a coordinate to the x of the b coordinate that's the x coordinate of those points and we should get a little visualization i can i think we can make that a different color let's make it a bit darker and it's even telling me how much area it's got and you see that the probability of being between those numbers is 0 0.31 and if you drag off a way down here you can see that by the time you get to the mean which is about there we're about 50 percent of the area so we've got an interactive way we can zoom in and out we can change the mean uh, we've got some real sample data underneath it. We can change the standard deviation to see that that's a tight uh, distribution. That's a spread out distribution. Uh, and we can even change the histogram bin width of the data underlying it to see that real data is spiky, but you can smooth it out by collecting it. And that's why approximating the real data with this normal distribution is so important because most things tend to do this, which is why you have to learn about the normal distribution and how to calculate those uh, those values under the curve. Uh, but you don't want to do the integration for real because it's one of those integrals you can't do even with A-level techniques. Uh, you need some numerical integration, which is one reason why integration is hardly ever done by hand analytically. Uh, if in the real world, you'd use numerical integration. Anyway, enough demonstration for now. Uh, I wanted this to be a quick video. So that was me playing around with the normal distribution in GeoGebra. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.